The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Friday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN. It's Jobs Friday. How about 303,000 jobs added for the month of March? You get revisions to the upside, net revisions in prior months of about 22,000 jobs. That was ahead of every single economist in Bloomberg, man. 40, 74 Bloomberg, uh, economists at Bloomberg. That number eclipses all of it. We get a hot number. The market. They like a resilient uh, economy right now, even as we have higher yields, even as the possibility of a cut potentially gets pushed back even further into the future. And nonetheless, we take a look at the markets this morning. Quite a sell off yesterday. You dropped down more than 100 points from where we were in the afternoon. You were trading at 53.10. We accelerate to a 5100 handle in the after hours of last night. This morning, we zoom in on the volatility on that number. You catch a spike up to 52.25, but just like that, we give up that spike. You see the volatility at 8.30. You made it down to a 5100 handle yet again. You have the S&Ps right now, positive by 12 points, but keep in mind, you're positive by 12 points, but as I just mentioned, Quite the sell-off yesterday of about 100 points in the S&Ps, even higher than that level. NASDAQ 100, you're up by about 6 tenths percent right now, 18,140. You got the Dow up by 43 points. That's about one tenth percent in the positive. We got a 38,000 handle in the futures, 38,957. And the Russell, watch out for those small caps, man, the Russell. All the other indices in the green, the Russell, not so much, man. Russell down by 12. You're below the lows of yesterday's session. You're off by about six tenths percent in the Russell, trading at 2,062. We jump around to everything this morning. Bitcoin down about $1,800 at $67,000 on the mark. How about crude, man? Quite the run yesterday, up to an 87 handle. This morning, we're just under that price level. Crude is up 29 pennies right now, trading at 86.89. You jump over to gold. In light of what's happening with the dollar index right now, gold holding up relatively well. Folks, the last weekend for the Gold Report sale going on. If you haven't checked it out, right on the front page of TFNM. We'll talk about it later in the program. You can save 35% off the monthly price. 22 years of the Gold Report going back to 2002. Remarkable. Uh, gold, as I mentioned, flat right now in the session at 2307. And yeah, when we get into yields, in terms of what's happening with yields, so what do you have? You have higher yields. You just got a drop of 20 ticks in the 10-year right now. That is correlating to a yield right now of 4.4%. We're sitting almost at 4.3, coming into that number. We're sitting at 4.4 right now. As our man Basil Chapman says, the day is young, man. We got 20 minutes to go until the opening bell. The market, a lot of data to break down what is going on in terms of uh, where supply is going to equal demand when we finally get the opening bell. How about the 30-year? Down a full point and 10 ticks at 117.04. I mentioned the dollar index. When you have your higher yield, what's that going to do? Look at this dollar chart, folks, and look at what gold is doing, okay? And, you know, there's a reasonable nature to say that man gold's been on quite a run maybe i'm a little late to the party and of course we don't know what the future is going to hold okay but look at this gold strength uh, excuse me look at this dollar strength you have going on this morning the dollar is up almost 50 pennies from 104.20 to almost 104.70 you have dollar strength on the heels of higher yield you see it on a daily basis and look at gold just gold hanging at these highs man okay Many times you would see, if you see higher yield spiking, if you see dollar strength, right, what happens? You see gold getting punished, and that is just not the case this morning. Remarkable how well gold continues to hold up. We got a 2300 handle on gold, and you see the volatility. We just had yield spike dramatically, and basically you have gold off only about 3 or $4 from where it was trading at 8 a.m. this morning coming into that number. Yeah, a little bit of volatility to the downside. On that first 830 bar, these are 530 bars, but boy, that is remarkably strong in the face of 
a strengthening dollar. We jump over to the volatility index. Quite a spike yesterday. We almost got a 17 handle, and we got the VIX sitting at 16.39. All things considered, volatility premium going up. Up in this market after a sell-off of about 100 points yesterday in the S&Ps. And what is remarkable, right? Check out this chart. Check out that line that we got where the VIX pops from. You put it back on a daily. We had talked about this line for some time, man. Accelerates below that line on the Fed meeting of March 20th. But, boy, it's holding well. You spike on that high. You spike to a 16 number, almost to a 17. We're sitting at 16.42. Pretty important area in terms of how this market handles. Higher yields coming at you right now on the heels of a very strong jobs number, to put it lightly. And we'll jump back to those yields. All important. Where are we sitting? We're almost right where we were. Almost about six weeks ago. February 23rd, we were at a price point in the 10-year as low as 109.09. February 22nd, 109.10. We're only about five or six ticks away from that. You see the bar that we got going on right now. It's almost a full point. You were up to 110.06 at one point. We're sitting right now at 109.16 with the 10-year yield sitting at 4.4%. There's your number, 4.4%. All right, you get into the numbers and the jobs. Let's do the headline number. The headline number, 303,000. Come on, we got a lot of screens up here today. My computer catching up. There it is. 303,000 jobs added. Unemployment rate slipping to 3.8%. Now, the unemployment rate was expected to come in at 3.8%. The expectation for the jobs number was about 200,000. Some numbers, 207, 214, something like that. Non-farm payrolls. I mean, how do you make the case that cuts got to come soon when you continually have this market delivering with jobs that beat all expectations? Pretty remarkable, to say the least. Average hourly earnings, also a number that the market was watching closely, rise 0.3% from the previous month. That was right in line. That put them up 4.1% from a year earlier, marking the smallest on the year gain since June of 2021. Both those numbers pretty much in line. So wages pretty much in line, but the jobs just keep coming, man. And Chairman Powell has talked about that they are watching that headline number for jobs, okay? Wages are an important component right now, but they are watching that number for jobs because any sign of weakness would indicate the need to potentially begin cutting, maybe quicker than they anticipate. That's a number they've been watching. And what happens? Yeah. We're stuck right now where jobs just keep crushing the market in terms of beating expectations across the board. If you didn't have the recency bias, folks, I've talked about this before, and I think it's something you want to keep in mind. If we all didn't have the recency bias that somehow we have to dramatically cut rates well below where we are at five and a quarter percent, if we didn't have this environment that for 15 years practically, even longer maybe, we've been sitting in an environment of very low interest rates, okay, that somehow we're accustomed it doesn't make sense. Think about it, folks, okay? It didn't used to be the case that you go out, you buy a car for five, six year loan, and they're giving you that loan for free. That did not, that's not how the economy usually works, okay? You usually, now I know they're factoring in some of that cost, okay? But hear those words, because when you think about it, times are changing. The growth rate of this economy right now is probably well above where it was prior. We're still dealing with inflation. We definitely have full employment in terms of how the Fed looks at full employment right now with an unemployment rate sitting at 3.8% and we're still dealing with inflation. So with that in mind, man, we we got some time for cuts right now, I think. We got higher yields coming at you. We got a lot to talk about, folks, on Friday Jobs. We'll be right back. Don't go away. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. 
published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. This portion of the morning market kickoff is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, folks. We got the market holding on to gains. S&P's up about 10 points right now, trading at 5206. It is important to take the context of this run that we've had, folks. From 4120, as recently as October of last year, it's barely April, and that reading is from late October, and we're only in early April. So you're really talking about a five-month run where the S&P's accelerated from 4100 up to 533350. We're just off that level. If you get a reasonable pullback, all right, I'm just bringing some context to the situation here. Even a 3A2, which is sometimes considered a healthy pullback in a positive bullish market, you're talking about a move of potentially 350 points to 48.64, and that would bring you kind of to the area where you chopped around for a bit from late December to where this thing really started accelerating again when you broke out towards the middle of January. Not saying that's when it's going to happen, man, in this economy. It doesn't even matter right now. It used to be good news was bad news, right? And it's a tough one for yields. But good news in terms of the market beating every single economist at Bloomberg in terms of what they were looking for for jobs added, no, it's not necessarily bad news because the market now feels like, you know what, we might be able to handle higher yields because that's the case. And that's where we are. And you got the S&P's positive. Even as we continue to push back the conversation of cuts in this market, it seems like, okay, the market is getting used to the idea that rates are not going back to where we were at some point. And that's an interesting one. If you really adopt a different nature in terms of what the market's willing to accept when you talk about lower yields on a longer term basis, and we're now looking at, no, that's not going to be the case, man. We're going to get some cuts eventually, okay? I don't think the Fed's going to sit at 5.5% in terms of where they feel our star, the natural growth rate in the economy is. It's not 5 and a quarter to 5.5%. That'd be pretty gangbusters if it was, even in this economy. It's not quite at that level. So they'll be coming, but we're still dealing with inflation. There is no pressure right now to cut 
Fed's got two mandates, full employment and price stability. The conversation is still persisting about price stability, and I don't think anybody is wondering whether this economy has full employment right now. Not on these type of numbers. Unemployment rate, 3.8%. We're adding 300,000 jobs in March. That does not scream that the Fed needs to lower interest rates to spur economic growth. Okay, and that's the reason why you do it. The Fed cuts interest rates to spur economic growth, right, to provide more capital to growth versus less capital, right? A looser economic policy allowing, allowing capital to flow more freely versus a tighter economic policy to cause that capital to tighten up. The cost of capital is what allows it to either be faster or slower. Why would they need to uh, allow for a faster growth rate of capital and the economy right now with everything going on. Pretty remarkable. All right, I'm going to jump to, first we're going to jump to the yield curve a little bit. Let's jump to this one just to see what we have going down the line, up and down the line on yield curve. You got the two-year jumping seven basis points. How about 4.71% on the two-year right now? You know, I used to talk about the five-year ladder right now, folks. We got a five-year ladder. You know, if you've been in this market and you've had the run from 4,100 up to 5,300, if you're living off, you know, fixed income, if you're in a retirement scenario where it's just not worth it, if we get a pullback of 10 to 20 percent in this market, okay, sometimes it's just not worth it, folks, okay? And I know I'm shifting from a trader mentality, but boy, we have some remarkable yields right now. And you're looking at a five-year ladder where you can lock in about 4.65 percent right now on a five-year ladder. You're looking at a two-year yield of just above 4.7 percent that two year is up seven basis points the 10 year up a similar seven basis points right now remarkable across the board all right now jumping to some of the comments that we have for the fed okay ira jersey he is for bloomberg What's his uh, chief U.S. interest rate strategist? Hear from him a lot on Bloomberg. Love Bloomberg. They got some great takes. Uh, it'll be I agree with this take. It'll be difficult for the Fed to make the case to cut rates if they are truly data dependent. We'll look at 4.5 percent as the next important technical level for the 10-year Treasury yield. We're sitting at about 4.4 percent right now. We came into this data point at about 4.3. We'll see where the day goes. It is a young day, as we like to say. Some of the other data points in there that could be indicative of something going on, okay? It's worth noting the BLS, this is the Bureau of Labor Statistics, unemployment rate for black Americans increasing in March to 6.4 from 5.6. Or are there some pockets of weakness in there in terms of where uh, maybe there is a little bit of lag and that the economy is weakening in certain sectors of the economy in certain sectors of jobs as you have an uptick for black Americans 6.4 percent from 5.6 that is quite a rise even with the headline number sitting at 3.8 percent just talked about you got the two year jumping dramatically okay the short end of the curve is really going to be impacted right now when you continually have cuts being pushed back in this economy uh, the number of people not in the labor force who want a job, little unchanged, 5.4 million is that number. Now, we get consumer price index out Tuesday. That's going to be an important one, folks, okay? Uh, as they stated here, the clearly, the market's not willing to really throw in the towel until we see that CPI. Still, the jobs data only accentuates the pain for investors who piled into the belly of the curve at much lower yields this year. Remember, we were talking about six or seven cuts. <sighs> If you were buying fixed income at six or seven cuts, folks, you talk about some volatility, to put it lightly. Now, this is what I talked about. 303,000 is the headline number. I mean, come on, economists. Not a, Nobody was going for a little bit of a tail risk to the upside. Every single forecast in Bloomberg's survey of 74 economists. This is why economists take a little bit of heat sometimes, man. Uh, every single one of them didn't eclipse where we were. Pretty remarkable. And you have to factor in. The previous two months' figures were revised up by a cumulative 22,000. So not only do we beat by about 100,000 jobs in March, but the revisions add a number of 22,000 as well. Uh, and one more thing I wanted to talk about is leisure and hospitality. How about it, folks? The 49,000 jobs added to leisure and hospitality mean that sector is now finally back to its pre-pandemic February 2020 level. 
remarkable when you think about what happened in that part of the economy, right? The destruction that occurred in many leisure and hospitality jobs. They were late to the party coming back, and they have eclipsed where we were in February of 2022. So that's a remarkable story persisting as well. We're back to the market. You're sitting at 52.11. We got less than four minutes until the opening bell. You got crude rising yet again. We're up to near the pre-market session highs, $87. Go fill up those gas tanks, folks. How about gold? Okay, gold could be the story right now. It is the story, folks. Look at how well gold is holding up. And then I jump to the dollar index, okay? You have dollar strength and even gold priced in dollars. I mean, Steve Rhodes always talks about gold priced in many different uh, currencies. Yeah, gold is probably through the roof in many different currencies when even priced in a strong dollar, you are still priced over 2300 I'm going to keep talking about it because this is the last weekend, folks. Head on over to the front page of TFNN. Sign up for the Gold Report, add that code 22 years, lock in 35% as long as you remain a subscriber, and ends this weekend. We'll be right back for the opening bell. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom Daly as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. S&P's up about 12 points. We're going to see how this market reacts, man. As we always see, the first move is not always the move that sticks on an important economic data point like this. What is the move that we've had so far? Well, the move we have, and it's a real move, folks. We got higher yields, 
All right, we'll jump to the 10-year right now. The 10-year, a little bit of a recoil. Okay, we're still negative by 16 ticks, but you were as low as about 109.16. We're sitting at 109.20. That's the 10-year. You jump over to the 2-year. You see the slide. We were sitting at about 102.05. We're at 102.01 right now for the 2-year. You jump over to the dollar index. Anytime that you're getting a higher yield, that's going to bring strength into the dollar index. The dollar is sitting at 104.63 right now. We check in on the dollar yen. Anytime you have dollar strength, right, the officials in Japan, they're not enjoying their afternoon nighttime coffee because it's what time is it in Japan right now? Probably, what, 7, 8, 9 o'clock at night, I think, in Japan right now. Uh, yes, yen weakness. That's going to correlate to dollar strength. You get the yen right now back up to the 15170 area. You were all the way down at 15080 as of last night. Continued, continued dollar strength and yen weakness in this market. And you jump over to the gold contract. All right. And as I've been mentioning, even in the face of all that dollar strength, you have gold holding up, holding up relatively well. And that's putting it lightly, folks, holding up very well. At 23.12 for gold, we jump over to silver right now. Silver sitting at 26.82. We check in on crude. As you got crude, right at about $87, and we got the markets accelerating to higher price points. Pretty remarkable. S&Ps sitting at 52.14. All right. Let's jump around to some of the equities. We'll kick it off with the biggest equity in the world, Microsoft shares. There's a little volatility for you yesterday from 4.28 down to 4.17. Microsoft, barely positive by about three tenths percent this morning. You jump over to Apple shares, they've been struggling. They're positive by three tenths percent. We jump over to Amazon shares, there's a lift for you up by 1.2 percent. Meta had quite a day yesterday, even though they'll give, give up some of it. Meta up another two percent so far this morning. Google shares, barely positive. Google up about one tenth percent. Nvidia, the AI poster boy, catches a bit up by 1.56 percent. I was thinking of our man Mike from Somerville uh, and his buddy Eric out there uh, talking about potentially short NVIDIA. That was quite a slide for NVIDIA shares yesterday. $50 from the upside to the downside for NVIDIA. Extreme volatility in this equity, and that's putting it lightly. NVIDIA, though, catching a bit up by 1.6% this morning for NVIDIA shares. And we got to talk about Tesla. Be careful in Tesla, folks, okay? You got green across the board right now, and you have Tesla down 1.1% at 169.16. Seems like a perfect storm hitting Tesla shares across the board on a longer-term basis. And, yeah, if you get a multiple compression like I was talking about yesterday, we've seen it happen before on some of these equities, right? You've seen it happen on Meta. They've rebounded. You've seen it happen on some of the growth equities in particular. You start getting multiple compressions, and you have a yield that is trading – with a yield that is higher for longer growth stocks uh, especially growth stocks that aren't growing where the market thought they were growing be careful for tesla shares folks okay and this is not some big anti elon story all right i think elon catches way too much hate for what he deserves okay even across the board on twitter man that's a private company everybody gives him all this grief you want to buy a private company do whatever you want with it man that's the deal when you're in a public company, it's a completely different deal, okay? That's why some of the things that he's done with Tesla in terms of putting out messaging that's basically an outright lie across the board sometimes as a public company. When you go to public markets to take investor money, there are regulations that you need to follow. That's not the case with a private company, okay? So there's all this distorted nature in terms of how those two stories play out. But there is a real problem going on with Tesla right now. Even at a price point of 169, when you look at where the EV market is, when you look at where Tesla is, and you look at the saga going on with his pay packages, with the stocks that he has margined, and where those margin calls may incur for Tesla shares at a time when he, it's going to be very difficult for Tesla to make a lot of money when they need to reach economies of scale, which means pushing out more cars. And how do you push out more cars? when you have a demand problem. So keep that one in mind if you're looking at Tesla, man, because even on a day when we got markets higher, you got Tesla shares trading down 1.4% right now. Yeah, they're talking about the Japanese people. I was very lucky, folks. I went to an outstanding school, Noble and Greeno, in Dedham, Massachusetts. If you're around the Boston area, you're looking for an outstanding school. Uh, boy, I was very privileged to go to that school. One of the things, so I started attending it in 1992. We're going off on a little tangent here. 1992, all right, let's see where the dollar yen, does it even go back that far where the dollar yen was? This is when Japan was going to take over the world, folks, okay? 
Let's see. All right, they bring it back. Perfect. We're going to zoom in on the action here. Where are we in 1992? 1992, you have the dollar yen trading at about 107. Okay. Now remember, as this number goes higher, that indicates yen weakness. As it goes lower, that indicates yen strength. Okay. You reach the strongest point out there at 81.96, which was in about April of 1995. So I started attending that school in seventh grade. And they offer Japanese. They offer Japanese, Spanish, and French, I believe, were the three languages that they offered. You were required to take one language at the time. I said, you know what? We're going to go big. We're going to go J Japanese. And uh, it was so cool at the time. So in middle school, it was more of a cultural class as well. You got to learn about it. High school, I had some outstanding teachers. And you got to, of course, learn the language. And then I was very lucky to go on an exchange program after my summer Summer after my sophomore year, I was so young when you think back to it, right? So it was about three or four weeks, went over there, stayed with a family who had a student who was in a accelerated program for English, um, very kind girl who was probably my similar age, sophomore, junior year, had a great family, two great parents, very kind people. There was a brother in the household as well. Uh, and what was so cool was I got to be over there, and when you look where it was, right, I remember the conversation in terms of, so I think that might have been, maybe it was about here in July of 96. So you had yen weakening from 85 all the way up to 110. I remember my dad telling me that, you know, it's better than where it's been. You're getting a much better conversion rate than where the yen had been in terms of strength, in terms of where you were over there. But I remember I would go to bed at about eight or nine in the evening and I would call my dad and he'd just be kicking off the day at about eight or nine in the morning. So pretty cool how that happens. Uh, and as we know, it didn't quite pan out for Japan as many expected back then. And unfortunately, I didn't continue that language in college and I forget a lot of it at this point, which is a bummer. But boy, that was an amazing experience and the Japanese people were so kind over there. I'll tell you a quick story. Uh, if you ever heard of Pachinko, all right, that's a form of gambling. Japanese love to gamble. I don't think that's any uh, any any secret, okay? So they have these pachinko parlors over in Japan, and what happens is as American teens, and this is back in 1996 or something like that, you appeared older than many, and they really weren't that worried about the regulations, and the Yakuza, the Japanese mafia, they controlled all the pachinko parlors over there anyway, okay? And so what would happen was we'd go in, and we weren't drinking, even though that they sold booze in vending machines on the street. So we were a little young for that, thankfully, and we weren't up to no good like that. But we will go in there and play a little bit of gambling. I'll never forget, man. One day, we're playing slot machines, okay? And these type of slot machines, they had three rolls, but these ones, you stopped each one. So you had to stop each one. I think I'd lost like 30 or 40 bucks or something like that. Nothing crazy. Kind Japanese man, okay? We, I couldn't even speak the language that well at this time. He comes over, he says, ah, it's all language, just all all um, using his hands. Let me let me do this, basically. He goes, bink, 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 and wins me like 200 bucks like that. I couldn't believe it. I don't know how it happened to this day. I don't know. Either way. We'll come back. We'll talk to the markets, folks. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Of your financial future, TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, 
he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. S&Ps can't hold this market down, man. S&Ps up 21 points, up four tenths percent in the context of yesterday's acceleration, though. Watch out in terms of that was quite a wipeout yesterday. But even with the hot jobs number, man, this market, they take it, they run with it to the upside. And we have the tenure right now jumping to yields, keeping our eye on it, kind of clawing back some of that pullback which is interesting. We were all the way down to 109.17. We're at 109.22 right now. So to finish up that story, because it was so interesting, and I appreciate all the people in the in the den, because it was um, just an absolutely amazing experience. We got to see an amazing amount of historical sites at the time visiting Buddhist temples. We stayed at one Buddhist temple in Japan. Uh, but what was remarkable, so just because I rushed it at the end there. So imagine we're sitting there. We're a few kids. You know, we're from America. Some gentlemen out there, he's playing a few slots. So they have Pachinko, which Google that to, to figure it out. It's kind of like a, a vertical um, Plinko. Plinko, what's that game on, on Price is Right? Um, Plinko, I think, or something like that. But they also had slot machines, okay? And you had to, these types of slot machines, you got to stop each wheel yourself, as opposed to the Vegas ones where you just spin the wheel and they stop, stop, stop. You got to match them, right? These ones, you actually hit a button to stop each one. I don't know if that button correlated to exactly how you do it. But I couldn't believe it. Swear to God, this gentleman playing a couple things to the right, right? We're losing 30 bucks, 40 bucks, which was a lot when you're $16 going over there for a period of a month. And he literally comes over. We put in the money. He takes his finger, hits the three wheels, hits, hits, you know, not like some crazy jackpot, but we won like 100 bucks, 200 bucks, something like that. And he gives us like a nice sign and walks away. <laughs> it blew our mind. I remember it to this day. It was just, it was like, what was that? How does that happen, man? Does this guy got the secret? Is he running the show? Nonetheless, right? So that happens. Now, here's the coolest part if you didn't know how they got around it. So technically, gambling was illegal. But what they did was, okay, imagine that they ran it somewhat like an arcade, okay? And the way it works is technically is that you were playing for prizes, okay? So just like you go to an arcade, you win tickets, you take those tickets up to the counter, and they have, just like in any arcade in America right now, they have a number of different prizes on the wall that all correlate to a level of ticket sales, okay? And those tickets you win by playing the games like Pachinko or the slots, okay? Now, here's the kicker. So let's say you win 500 tickets, whatever, some arbitrary number, okay? Those 500 tickets win you X prize, okay? The way they loophole the legal regulations, again, remembering that it's run by the Yakuza, okay? So it's not just some Joe Schmo loopholing the, the, the laws over there. They give you a prize, and then what you do is you take that prize, and you go out back and you sell that prize to just a random person. So you haven't gambled. What you've done is you've played a game for a prize, which is completely allowed, just like you're allowed to do in arcades 
arcades in America right now. And then you just happen to go out back and you have somebody willing to buy that prize off of you for cash. Now, what was so interesting is you go out back, there's a little shed. In that little shed is one little porthole that you slide this little prize that you've won under. All you see is a little hand come out of that little shed, take your prize and give you your money. But that was the system and that's how they loopholed it. And therefore that's how the gambling flourish. Quite an education for a 16 year old coming from America, man. Um, but boy, as I speak to it right now, I remember it like it was yesterday because uh, the whole existence of the gentleman helping us out, probably seeing American kids losing their money. Maybe he had a system. Maybe he didn't. Maybe he was in the Yakuza and he knew what was going on. And he just wanted to make sure the American kids were having a good time. I don't know what was going on. Nonetheless, an amazing memory. Uh, and I had all amazing memories over there. Just, uh, yeah, very kind people across the board. And being able to see those historical sites, some of those old Buddhist temples, etc., very amazing as well. All right, let's jump to what else we have going on in this market. Let's check out some of the headlines we got going on. 303,000 and 3.8%. That is the headline out there for sure. Now, yeah, jumping around to where we are. I mean, look at the EV article, right? You can't escape a day without poor EV articles. And this is just reminding you what's going on, folks. We talked about it last year with Tesla in terms of the price hikes and the people just getting clobbered when you had the price, excuse me, the price decreases across the board, poor resale values of EVs, threatened adoption, warned some experts. You better believe it, man, okay? If there is a demand problem, are you gonna be the one buying EVs at this price point? If you're talking about that potentially you have the average price even continuing to fall further? Elon plays the long game, okay? And the long game right now is they need to increase economies of scale, and the only way to do that is to offer the masses a better price point. That's the only way he's going to bring that company to the masses. They got to get a lower price point. The only way they're going to do that is to decrease prices, sell to more people. And how do you do that when you have a demand problem? I don't know. But even as somebody myself, now I bought a vehicle five years ago to like this month almost. Five years ago, I bought a vehicle. And I remember thinking at that time, you know what? I'll buy this vehicle. And maybe by the next time, you know, we're going to be looking at 2024, 2025, the next time I'm buying a vehicle. You got to think back to where the world was at that time, folks. I think in 2020, Elon was talking about that you're going to have a self-driving. I'll look up that quote during the next break. Self-driving fleet of vehicles, right? Remember the promises that you're going to be able to drive from L.A. to New York in a Tesla that will pick you up, drive you there all at once, self-driving, automated, et cetera. So I'm saying to myself, all right, I'll, I'll buy a gas vehicle in 19 and by the time it's my next vehicle, the next vehicle is probably going to be electric. How far are we from where we thought we were going to be at that time? Yeah, about as far as you could probably be in considering where we thought. Now, this one's interesting, talking about Hyundai's Genesis brand is a dark horse in the U.S. luxury vehicle market. Folks, Hyundai, Kia, boy, they got it going on right now, man. Hyundai's Genesis launched in the U.S. nearly eight years ago. But the South Korean luxury brand has proven itself worthy of the domestic market. You know, I've talked about before, man. Now, the Genesis brand, okay, it is pricey, but they got something going on, man. And when you think about that, you know, it's the Hyundai group. They got Kia in there as well. I've talked about myself. I was looking at buying a three-row SUV. Look at the Genesis sales in the U.S. as annual units sold. It just keeps going up, man. Okay, they got quite a thing going on. Pay attention to Hyundai, especially when you look at Kia. Because the Kia Telluride in particular, folks, I've said it before, probably the best bang for your buck in terms of what you get per dollar for that vehicle. It's a three-row SUV, and I mean, they're priced forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000. And yeah, you know, you want to go out there and you want to buy a Chevy Yukon um, Denali, something like that. Yes, it's a better vehicle than a Kia Telluride. You're going to pay twice. You're going to pay a hundred grand versus fifty. Is it really double? And in the face of people trying to save some cash right now, um, the notion of spending a hundred to one hundred and ten thousand dollars on a vehicle, folks, I don't know. That one's a tough one right now to get over in my head, and it should be a tough one, okay? Because you're approaching, you know, and even with housing prices going up, I'm in Lakeland, Florida. You can find houses for $300,000 here. So how do I rationalize buying a vehicle for a third of a house when realistically that vehicle over the course of five or 10 years is gonna you know, depreciate to a dramatic degree versus uh, companies that are really delivering value like Hyundai, like Kia, 
So, you know, in the car conversation, keep that one in mind. And we jump back to Tesla down 1.4% today. Let's see how some of the other car makers are doing. Ford up by three tenths percent. Quite a quite an acceleration lower for them yesterday. But Ford, they're ditching their fully electric vehicle. Ford was the Explorer or Expedition, and they're going for hybrids. And uh, that was by the year 2030. So there's been a dramatic shift. The next five or 10 years, dramatic shift in this market. Speaking of the market, we got higher prices, folks. Markets at intraday highs. S&Ps right now up 26 points. One more segment. Don't go away, folks. Hi, folks. This is Tom O'Brien. It's the 22nd anniversary of the Gold Report. Can you believe it? We've taken 22 trips around the sun together, and we have many more to come. This year alone, the Gold Report has returned over 50%, and I want you to come along for the ride. I provide in-depth analysis of the gold market as a whole, in addition to providing outlooks on individual mining equities. For a limited time, you can save 35% off the monthly price for as long as you subscribe. 35% savings will be applied to the current monthly price, and it will stay with your subscription forever. With gold pushing all-time highs, gold equities trading higher, and inflation still raging, this is a great time to try my newsletter, The Gold Report. First-time subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Just enter promo code 22 years at checkout, and you'll see the 35% savings applied to your subscription price, and this deal will stay with your subscription for as long as you subscribe. Don't forget, just enter promo code 22 years at checkout. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Quite the market, folks. We got the S&Ps up 31 points. NASDAQ 100 up 140. Dow up 117. Russell lagging a bit up by three. I mean, check out some of these accelerations, man. Amazon up by 2.7% right now. We jump over to Microsoft up a full percent. NVIDIA shares up by 2% right now. Whew, how is Apple doing? Apple up by four tenths percent. Pretty remarkable. We check in on Tesla shares down by a full percent. Now, I did Google. OK, and what did I do? Let's see. What did I exactly Google? So all I Googled was Elon Tesla self-driving fleet quote. OK, and you go down a couple news articles and it's remarkable where it was because I knew that I was thinking at the time. I said, man, these these stories are coming out. I said, what did I do? I said, I bought a car five years ago. Right. When's this story from five years ago, April of 2019? What's the headline? Elon Musk predicts Tesla driver driver driverless taxi fleet next year. 
He was telling the public, folks, that by the end of 2020, he's going to have a fleet of self-driving vehicles. Remember that. Remember the words, okay, in 2019. How is that even legal as a CEO to be spewing that type of language when you are so far off to where the world is? Um, yeah. Now, now, you know, there's many others that popped up here. OK, uh, Musk's bet on Tesla, human like robots and self-driving cars. Let's pull this one up. This one's from Reuters. And listen, this is not about hate. Like I said, OK, this is about, you know, you can't lie to the public, man. And I there's there's something as optimism and hope. And that is great. OK, but this one's from 2022. Human like robots and self-driving cars. And the one here said that um, I would be shocked if we do not achieve full self-driving safer than human this year. I would be shocked. That was January of 2022. So keep those quotes in mind, okay? This one comes there. Um, yeah, here it is. I would be shocked if we, oh, I swear, I would be shocked if we do not achieve self-driving, full self-driving safer than human this year. I would be shocked. I, I don't know how in the know that you could make that case reasonably, folks. And we're going to finish it up with gold. Head on over to the front page of TFNN, folks. Gold is up $12 right now, even in the face of a dollar index that is spiking higher. Check out that gold report sale, folks, on the front page. It runs through this weekend. Have a great Friday. Stay tuned for Basil coming up next, folks. Have a great weekend.